Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to Shoot the Moon with our host, Indiana Jeff. <laughs> we and, hope you enjoy. And John. And John. Yes, I'm John. Uh, sorry, I don't have any, you know, get up here. But uh, Jeff is going to you know, walk us through his, uh, his moon setup tonight. Um, we got some, some pretty stuff to show you. We're going gonna to go through it. So what do you got for us, Jeff? Well, I, I, I've got a... I've got an eight-inch uh, Celestron SCT sitting outside the observatory here, and it's pointed at the moon. And I'm using a Hyperstar uh, lens with a um, with a cooled camera sitting on the end of it. And this is the image that I've got uh, at about well, at about sunset. Sunset's in about uh, two minutes, and uh, we're going to see uh, today. We're going to see if we can capture roughly 500 frames of the moon and uh, do some lucky astronomy. We'll, we'll throw out the bad frames and we'll uh, stack the good frames and then uh, do some processing. It'll take about 15 minutes per of, uh, of time to, um, to process this. So right now I'm going to uh, use SharpCap. Uh, uh, for those of you familiar with SharpCap, I'm going to capture about 500 frames and um, and then do the rest of the post-processing after that and see if we can make it a prettier picture. Uh, I'm using, right now, I've got um, the exposure and the gain on auto. So it's automatically adjusting the exposure time and the gain uh, depending on the light conditions outside. And right now we're doing it about a quarter second um, at about 300 uh, gain for this camera. And what kind of camera are you using, Jeff? Um, it's a, a ZWO ASI uh, 533 cool camera, um, one shot color, and I don't know what else about that okay. thing. Yeah, no, it should be. And right now we're at about negative 8.3 degrees. It looks like the cooler's at 100 percent, so it must be plenty warm out there tonight. Yeah, I've got it set at negative 10, and we're hitting about negative 8. And it's uh, it's running pretty hot, so it's um, uh, it's it's barely keeping up. Uh, I'd like it to be a little cooler because it'll if I don't have it cool enough, I'll get some some hot pixels uh, all over the place. But hopefully we won't have too many on this show. Yeah. So I'm right now. I've got this thing at full frame, and I'm going to stop it down a little bit so this um, so that I can increase my frame rate. You can see down here. The frame rate's about 1.8 frames per second, but I need to boost that up um, to about 30 frames a second to uh, to get a good decent picture. So to do that, I'm not going to show, I'm not going to display all of the pixels around the whole frame. I'm going to uh, pretty much crop it down so that just the moon is uh, is showing. So to do that, I'm going to go up here and change the capture area from full frame at 3,000 by 3,000 down to 800 by 600. And you'll see that we're now we're only seeing part of the moon. And I am also going to reduce, I'm going to take it off of auto for a minute and uh, change the settings a little bit so there's not quite so much uh, blown out. Ooh, that's on the pretty edge. There, Jeff. Yeah, a nice looking, uh, looking contrast there. I think we were missing that. And over with the with the experience I, that I have with this, I know to make it dimmer than you would normally want it. So I'm going to bring it down to about here and reduce the gain a little bit. And I want to make sure that it's still in focus, and it looks like it's pretty good. Focus is really important because one thing you can't change in post-processing is focus. If you don't have focus right, you're done. I'm going to start the capture. I've got 500 frames I'm going to capture. I'll start that now. And you can see that I've got 35, 36 frames per second, and it will only take a few seconds to capture 500 frames. I'm about halfway done, and there's 500 frames. The two programs that I use to post-process this are AutoStacker 3 and Registax. So I'm going to bring up AutoStacker, 
and open up the file I just created. I created a movie. It's, it's really a movie, um, a 500 frame movie. And I'm going to leave it. Um, okay. And uh, I've opened that up. So this is the this is the first frame of the movie. And what Actually, were you just uh, changing there with the image stabilization? It looks like uh, that will. I want to focus on something so that uh, the, the the high focus items that I want to see, usually along a Terminator, um, are, are going to be visible. And and the auto stacker will kind of say, okay, let's use that as a base and let's uh, compare everything to that. Uh, I haven't analyzed it yet. I'm going to analyze it now. There's really three steps in AutoStacker. You open it just to, to bring up the first frame of the movie, make sure it's the right movie, and then, uh, and then do analysis. So this analysis of 500 frames takes five seconds maybe. And what you see in this graph here is 500 frames, uh, and some of them are better than others. So the ones that are better are, right, are at the peak here. So I want to uh, stack these up one on top of another but I don't want to pick just any frame I want to pick the best frame one of the best frames available uh, in the in the movie so to do that I use this slider up here and I can move the move the uh, slider over to pick a good picture and it looks like this is probably the best picture in the bunch so I'm going to focus on that one and then um, and what are you looking for to determine that's the best looking picture, Jeff? Well, it's a quality graph, so it's the, it's the clearest, crispest picture because the way the Earth is, or the way the atmosphere is, we have uh, uh, good viewing, good seeing, and not so good seeing. So we're picking the best pictures out of 500 to use and throwing the West array. In fact, this line up here is the is the the percentage to stack. In other words, I'm going to stack 30%, the best pictures of 30% of, of, the, of all, 30 of them, and throw the 70% away, um, and then align them and, and, and uh, collect only those, stack all those, stack the light of all those. And the auto stacker is amazing. It just um, aligns it and stacks them up. I don't have to do much. So at this point, I want to place a grid on the moon, and I allow. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an automatic person at this point. I don't choose. I could choose these manually if I wanted to, but why? So I let the machine pick it. I wanted to pick it so that they're uh, not too bright, but at least I want to get the Terminator, which is the dark, uh, the light dark line on the moon. Uh, I think it's sunrise at this point. Um, so I want to make sure there's a lot of red dots along that line because that's that's what I'm really interested in. And this looks like a pretty good distribution. So I'm going to stack these. And I see it's done 167 of those. It looks like. Those yeah, boxes, I, I, so I don't like. Plenty the, of points. You can put <laughs> well, you can put thousands of them, or you can put just a few of them. Um, I like this kind of arrangement where I have this many approximately. If you get too many, then it takes a long time, and I don't really see good results, that much better results. And it takes a lot longer to, for the laptop to process them. So it looks like it's done. So that was the three-step process. Open it up, analyze it, and stack it. And what it, what it does now is sent it over to my next post-processing program, which is Registax. So let's take a look in Registax and see what we ended up with. So in Registax, it took that picture and took the best of all of it, and now I can make it pretty. So right, the first thing I'm going to do is auto balance it to make sure it's the right colors. And that looks pretty good. It's a little blue, so I can, I can make it um, a little less blue. That's a lot less blue. <laughs> We're green at that point. Well, I is keep forgetting. The, uh, but what is that I all have, the cheese in the movie? In order, whenever you make a change, <laughs> it's only going to change a little bit of it. So you have to click on the do all button to mm. change the whole picture. So it's uh, it's just too much processing to do it 
a little bit of, or uh, all at once. So with every little change, are you getting is it big enough? I, I'm going to make yeah. it a little bit bigger. I'm going to show the full image. Yeah, I oh, there you go. Yep. There. There, yep. Okay. Um, so now I, I can move these sliders over here. Um, I, I always use Gaussian for a, a wavelet filter, and sometimes dyadic works better than linear. I, I, but I, earlier today I tried this, and linear works the best, depending on how much of the moon you want to you want to image. So. There are six layers, and I never use any layer further down than three. And most of the time, I just use one. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move the slider over a little bit and click the Do All button, and it will do the whole picture. And that's looking a little better, but it's a little too sharp, so I'm going to denoise it a little bit. And then Do All. Now on this particular... With this particular camera, you probably notice that it's pixelating from about here along this ridge and, and going up. And you can see the individual squares of pixels uh, right along the edge. And it's, you know, so that's not the best picture in the world, but um, some of the detail is not too bad. So at this point, um, I can save this image. Now, this is only 17% of moon, so. When you do, uh, you know, half moon or full moon or something a lot larger, you're going to spend more time uh, adjusting uh, this over here. You're going to adjust this differently. You'll end up with more points overall. I'm yeah, assuming. you're going to yep. have more points or less points. Um, yep. And right now I've got the, a size of a 48, so that's that's why you see big squares, and I can get away with it. But later on, with the when I do a, a larger moon. I'll have to have even bigger squares and fewer of them uh, if I want to get it done uh, during the <laughs> during the darkness hours. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> we're we're still a little light here, Jeff. It's still a little bright out, but it, it, I think we're getting the getting the getting the point across. Getting yeah. a nice looking image there. All right, that's um, the moon is always a very pretty object. I think. Oh my goodness! And yes. And on those nights when you know it's a full moon, as I think they all say, if you can't beat them, sometimes you got to join them. You know. <laughs> It's, uh, it, it, it kills everything else that we want to see, you know, if we're doing our deep sky stuff, but it's pretty. Yeah. All right. Thanks very much for joining us, and yep. we'll see you next time. Yeah. Just remember to like and subscribe and hit the bell. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you'd like to, if you like what you see, uh, maybe consider becoming a member, coming down and joining us at the Darling Hill Observatory.